वेलकम बैक इन द लेक्चर सीरीज ऑफ बेसिक इलेक्ट्रॉनिक्स मैं सेल्फ डॉक्टर सी एच विठलाणी प्रोफेसर एट गवर्नमेंट इंजीनियरिंग कॉलेज राजकोट इन लास्ट लेक्चर वी डिस्कस्ड एनालॉग कम्युनिकेशन टेक्निक्स वेर वी ट्रांसमिट द एनालॉग इंफॉर्मेशन सिग्नल डायरेक्टली विदाउट कन्वर्टिंग इट इन टू डिजिटल इन दिस लेक्चर वी विल बी डिस्कसिंग डिजिटल कम्युनिकेशन टेक्निक्स एंड ऑफकोर्स Uh, this lecture is just a overview of digital communication because there is an entire full 50 hour course is given to electronics and communication engineering student in 6th semester the name of the course itself is a digital communication so this lecture is simply overview of uh, digital communication techniques which will be discussing here at the end of uh, this lecture students are expected to list the advantage of digital communication so these are the learning outcomes nba specifies that every course should have a course outcomes and every uh, you know chapter should have a learning outcomes so these are the outcomes of this particular lectures we expect that students should be able to explain the sampling and quantization draw block diagram of pulse code modulation understand multiplexing techniques and know transmission of digital signals so these are the expectation from the students at end of uh, this lecture now a question may occur in your mind that why there is a digital communication you know with help of analog communication we can modulate our information signal and we can transmit it but as i told in last lecture that the noise is a biggest villain for communication systems and once you convert your analog signal into a digital signal and if you transmit that digital signal then it is more immune to channel noise and distortion because you know that your digital signal if you look at it is like this it has a logic 1 and logic 0 and even if a noise want to corrupt this signal if some noise come here then it will not be able to change this logic 1 even if there is some noise available here then also this noise will not be able to change the logic zero level because there is a lot of noise margin available here normally logic 1 is represented by plus 5 volt or plus 12 volt or plus 48 volt depending on the system and logic zero is normally utilized uh, as a zero volt but certain range is given so zero up to 0 to 0.5 can be considered as zero and 4 to 5 can be considered as logic 1 and similarly other coding techniques are also using like uh, you know plus 5 for logic 1 and minus 5 for logic 0 plus 12 for logic 1 and minus 12 for uh, for logic 0 like that but in all such cases you can see that there is a lot of noise margin is available and noise cannot corrupt digital signal easily and that is the biggest advantage of digital communication you, because your communication is reliable communication in that case then another advantage is that use of regenerative repeaters in transmission path is possible and that means if you transmit a digital signal after transmitting a digital signal up to certain distance it will be corrupted by noise as well as, well as the shape will change it will become like this one pulse will become like this and from this you will be able to generate clean noise free pulse with help of a regenerative repeaters and this is very easy to do in case of a digital technology but if you, uh, the same thing is also true in case of analog communication you can use amplifier in between but the problem with amplifier is that it will amplify your signal at the same time it will also amplify your noise so uh, it, you know the analog system it is very difficult to keep noise away while in a digital system we can always uh, you know it, we can use some repeaters like this and repeaters will be simple in nature which which can recover your signal noise free clean signal can be generated this type of signal can be generated with help of a repeaters then digital hardware circuit you can use like you can use computer microprocessor microcontroller all this digital technology you can use if you convert your signal your information into a digital form and you can use computer to control your communication system 
that is not possible in a case of analog communication technology because analog signals you cannot directly interface with a computers microcontrollers or microprocessors but if you convert that into a digital you can use this all systems in your hardware so marriage between uh, communication and computer is possible because of this and all of you know that the advantage of this marriage between the computer technology and communication technology so you can use all this hardware uh, only if you convert your signal into a digital one advanced digital signal processors you can use to process your si communication signals that is the biggest advantage which we are getting then another uh, biggest motivation behind the digital communication is that digital signals can be coded or encrypted to obtain the privacy in analog communication one can easily intercept your signal if he knows your carrier frequency if he knows your type of modulation then one can easily intercept your message even if he is not knowing the carrier he can tune to the entire range and can find out your uh, carrier frequency and can tune to it and can intercept your message so there is no privacy at all so it is not secure communication but if you are converting your information signal in a digital and then if you are using a digital communication technology then you can encrypt your message so that is the biggest advantage of digital communication it is easy and more efficient to multiplex several digital signals so multiplexing is, uh, multiplexing is also possible in analog in last lecture we have seen frequency division multiplexing where we can assign different carrier to different information but with a similar process in time domain we can use time division multiplexing to multiplex the various digital signals and time division multiplexing is much simple than the frequency division multiplexing in a time division multiplexing we can use computer and digital hardware and because of that we are getting more accuracy and it is easy to multiplex the digital signals compared to the analog signals then exchange of snr that is snr is a signal to noise ratio so signal to noise ratio and bandwidth trade off is possible in case of a digital communication in analog communication as we have discussed in last lecture that if you want to transmit a speech signal of 3.4 kilohertz you require a bandwidth of 2 fm using amplitude modulation so 2 fm means for a speech signal you require a bandwidth of 6.8 kilohertz now even if you increase bandwidth more than that you are you are not getting any advantage there is no improvement in the quality of the signal if you are transmitting a audio signal of 20 kilohertz using amplitude modulation then you require a bandwidth of 40 kilohertz but even if you increase more than 40 kilohertz you are not getting any advantage your signal to noise ratio remains same in fact it will become worse because you know uh, you are increasing the bandwidth means you are increasing your window size so more noise you are allowing so you know sometimes snr will become poor if you increase the bandwidth but in case of a digital communication if you increase the bandwidth the signal quality will improve and when signal quality will improve the signal to noise ratio will increase so that trade off is possible why uh, it will happen that we will discuss um, because you will not be able to understand that now but when, once i will discuss the sampling and quantization process then i think after that we will discuss this point once again and then you will be able to understand the trade off between the snr and bandwidth then another advantage is easy to store the digital information now you have a mobile you have a lot of you know audio and video stored in your sd card and you are playing with all audio and video signals and whatever the audio and video signal which is the information signal which is stored in sd card it is in a digital form whatever the audio and video signal stored in your computer hard disk or a laptop hard disk is also digital in nature so once the signal is converted into a digital you can store it efficiently in a compact form you can also store the analog signal it's not like that we can if you have information in analog form you can store it but in that case you require a magnetic tap and you know size of recording device is more compared to the digital one so here storage is efficient 
now let us look at uh, some of the basic things of uh, because as you know the advantage of digital communication we want to use digital communication for a transmission but before we use this we have to convert our analog signal into a digital signal so here again we will uh, you know consider the sine wave uh, this is what we want to transmit but we, uh, because we want to use the digital communication technique we will not transmit this signal as it is because it is having a infinite number of amplitudes and infinite number of amplitudes we cannot transmit uh, with a digital communication technology so we have to discretize this signal we have to discretize this signal in time domain not only in time domain also in amplitude domain so first let us look at the discretization of this continuous signal in time domain so that can be done with help of a sampling so sampling is the process by which we discretize the information signal in a time domain here information signal which we are considering is a sine wave as i told in the last lecture sine wave is a very good for communication engineers to explain basic concepts uh, but otherwise you know the same uh, this will be true for if you have a, some complex signal like a speech signal like this then also it is a true that you have to sample this signal in time domain so these are the you know sampling pulses which is shown here so this is what we call is a sampling signal and the frequency of this sampling signal is fs and fs is equal to 1 upon ts where ts is a time interval between the two pulses so this ts defines your sampling period and these are the sampling points you can see that this is the one sample and this is another sample so all these samples are taken from uh, this signal you can see here this is also one sample so these are the samples uh, uh, taken from this signal and now this signal is our sample signal which is a discrete version of our original information signal now question is that how many sampling uh, rate we should use how many sample you should take in one cycle or what should be the sampling rate that is the question right now to answer that question we will discuss the frequency spectrum of the information signal as well as frequency sample uh, spectrum of this sample signal if we draw the you know a frequency spectrum of pure sine wave it is just a one component in frequency domain so if we have a information signal as a sine wave having a frequency fm then we have a only one component fm available here but once we sample this sine wave we have a multiple copy of this sine wave at the uh, you know sampling interval like one fm will be there one uh, one fm will be around fs that is fs plus fm fs minus fm 2 fs plus fm 2 fs minus fm which is shown in the next slide you can see here this is our information signal this information signal uh, you know is spectrum of information signal having a range from minus fm to plus fm if you are considering only a sine wave then it is you know a fm only because only one frequency will be present in a sine wave but if you are considering a band of uh, signal like in your speech signal then it has a band of, from 300 hertz to 3.4 kilohertz if you are considering audio signal it has a band of 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz so if you have a band of signal then if you take a sample of that signal you have a multiple copies available after sampling so you can see that the copy is present original copy is here another copy is available here third copy is available here and like this it is available infinitely so it is available at fs it is available at 2 fs it is available at 3 fs 4 fs and so on on this side also minus F, uh, fs minus 2 fs and so on now interesting thing is that here our point of discussion is that what should be the sampling rate so now this is a frequency spectrum of our original information signal and this is a frequency spectrum of our sampled signal at the receiver side we are only interested in this original signal we are not interested in some other signals so like for example in this case we are interested only in this we are not interested anywhere else so at the receiver side we are interested to separate out this information signal 
we don't want this multiple copies here so we have to use this type of filter which is which is shown here with a dotted line you know the dotted line which is shown here if you design this type of filter then uh, it is very easy to say that you design the filter which is shown with this dotted line because you know the filter response is something like sharp like this uh, this let's say cutoff frequency fc that means the frequency below cutoff frequency will pass and above cutoff frequency will not pass it will be attenuated to zero but uh, it is very easy to say it is very easy to say that you design filter like this but it is not easy to do it yes yeah, easy to say but not easy to do it it is lot of difficulties are in involved if you design this type of filter you cannot design any practical filter having a sharp cut off characteristics like this if you are designing with analog filter design you require infinite number of operational amplifiers if you are designing with a you know a digital filters then you require a infinite order that means you require infinite number of filter coefficients which is practically not possible so always your filter characteristics will be uh, not like this but it will be smooth like this it it, it is a, a gradual slope like this of course you can if you increase the order of filter then you will be near to this ideal one but you will not be able to achieve exactly this ideal filter so if you are interested in this information signal we will design a filter which will separate out this information signal and if we have a separation between these two copies then we will be able to design the filter and we can separate out this required information easily now let us consider another case where we are using sampling rate less than 2 fm so this is the case of under sampling if you are sampling at the rate less than 2 fm that means if you are taking very few samples you are taking less number of samples to sample that information signal then in a frequency spectrum all those multiple copies will be overlapped and that overlapping is technically known as aliasing so this aliasing will take place so in case, in that case even if you design you know a filter having a ideal characteristics then also you know the other copy will be present along with the original copy of course you will not be able to design this ideal filter your filter will be always look like this but in all cases you know this multiple copy will be presented along with the original copy which will distort your original copy so you will not be able to recover your message back if you are using frequency sampling frequency less than 2 fm so this uh, theorem is given by a scientist nyquist so it is known as a nyquist theorem it says that your sampling frequency should be greater than or equal to 2 fm that means if your message frequency is uh, speech let's say 300 hertz to 3.4 kilohertz then minimum sampling rate as per the nyquist criteria i require 6.8 kilohertz that means 6800 samples in one second that is the minimum rate i require if i use rate below than this then i will not be able to recover my speech signal back at the receiver side so this is the first condition for digital communication that in a digital communication you have to do the sampling and sampling also at the rate specified by the nyquist criteria that it should be greater than or equal to 2 fm now suppose even if you use 2 fm exactly then theoretically you know mathematical point of view theoretically you will be able to extract the information back at the receiver side but practically you will not be able to extract the information because practically you cannot design the ideal low pass filter having characteristics which is shown with the dotted line here because you know if you can design a filter uh, with uh, as the response shown in dotted line then you know you can use fs equal to 2 fm but as it is not possible to design a ideal filter ideal low pass filter having a, the characteristics shown with a dotted line then you have to use frequency greater than 2 fm so normally in a telephone quality speech which is having a bandwidth of 300 hertz to 3.4 kilohertz the sampling rate utilizes 8000 samples per second so instead of using 
six thousand and eight hundred, we are using higher than that. That is, that is eight thousand samples per second, so that we will be able to extract the information easily at the receiver site. Now let us look at another parameter that is a quantization. Now quantization is again a process of discretization, but that discretization is in amplitude domain. The sampling is doing a discretization in time domain, while the quantization will do the same process in amplitude domain. Because we cannot code each and every amplitude. If you look at analog signal, it has an infinite number of amplitudes. and we cannot assign separate code for all amplitudes so you require you know infinite number of bits to code your information signal so in order to reduce number of bits we have to do a process of approximation so quantization is also known as a process of approximation where infinite number of amplitudes are converted into finite number of amplitudes you know then then and then only you will be able to assign a separate binary code for each and every amplitude so quantization is very important process in case of a digital communication let us look at example this analog signal which we want to quantize and here we have taken the entire amplitude from minus 4 volt to plus 4 volt it can be any amplitude it can be minus 1 volt to plus 1 volt it can be minus 5 volt to uh, plus 5 volt but for the calculation simplicity i have taken it minus 4 to plus 4 volt and uh, i think this dotted line I, uh, is not visible i will draw it here you can see these are the quantization levels which we are specifying here these all are quantization levels uh, actually it is shown here with dotted line but because of poor resolution it's not available but it is drawn here again so basically this entire amplitude is divided into eight total number of levels now uh, this eight levels that means for each level you require three bits because you know that 2 is to 3 is equal to 8 that means every sample point you will be able to code with a three bit now let us look at here this sample this sample value uh is you know approximated by with this value so you know there is a, a nearest level here available so this is let's say this is 3 volt uh this is a 2 volt uh, this is a 1 and this is 0 so 0 1 2 3 so, so this is 3 volt so even this amplitude is around you know uh, 2.6 somewhere but it is quantized to 3 volt so instead of 2.6 we keep it 3 volt similarly here you can see that amplitude is uh, you know coded with a 2 volt instead of you know it is it's around 2.4 but the nearest value is 2 so it is coded with a 2 so now here you know if you represent this original signal as uh, ft and if you represent the quantized signal as fqt let's say f and then qt this quantized signal then the difference between this ft that is original signal and the quantized signal is known as quantization noise or we can say quantization error so this will be a error which will be there so this is the actual value which is available here and this is the quantized value and this actual value so difference between these two is a quantization error and in this case you can see that the maximum quantization error is 0.5 because if your signal is uh, about 3.5 volt you are quantizing it to 4 volt right and if it is around 3.49 you are quantizing it with a 3 volt so maximum error that you are getting here is a 0.5 and now suppose if you want to reduce this error what we require is that we have to increase number of levels here we are using eight number of levels if we increase this levels by double let's say we are use the 16 levels further we uh, you know divide it further by 2 so total we have a 16 levels so if we are using a 16 levels then the number of bits required will be 4 bits to code one uh, quantized value but the advantage which we are getting here now quantization error will be reduced by so now it becomes 0.25 right so at the expense of you know more number of you know this uh, uh, 
levels we are getting less quantization error so if we can allocate more number of bits then you know quantization error will reduce further you know instead of 60 uh, 16 quantization level if we use 32 levels then we require 5 bits per sample to represent that sample value but quantization error further will be divided by 2 so now in that case your quantization error will be again divided by 2 so it becomes 0.25 by 2 so 0.125 further if you increase more number of level let's say you reach from 16 to 32 then you require 5 bits to represent sample value again your quantization error will be further divided by 2 so now 0.125 divided by 2 so it becomes 0.0625 so if you increase number of bits for a sample then the quantization error will reduce and you know that in our advantage of digital communication i told that there is a trade off between snr that is signal to noise ratio and bandwidth in digital communication we call snr the equivalent term is sqr that is a signal to quantization noise because the biggest noise present here in digital communication system is a quantization noise so signal to quantization noise ratio will improve if you increase number of bits but at the same time you know if you are using more number of bit to represent your sample value then you know if you want to transmit that information digital information over the internet you require more bit rate so again you know there is a compromise if you want a good quality you have to use more number of bits but at the, at the same time you have to increase the bit rate and if you are going to store this digital signal then you require more memory so in a telephone quality speech the number of bits used per sample is 8 bit so 8 bit means 2 raised to 8 quantization intervals are available so 2 raised to 8 is a 256 so 256 number of quantization intervals are available so if you are having you know a amplitude uh, from minus 1 to plus 1 volt so total amplitude range of 2 volt it will be divided by 256 in our example this range minus 4 to plus 4 that is total range is 8 volt it will be divided by 256 that will be the uh, one level of quantization and you can see that now quantization error is much less uh, which will not create any problem for a telephone quality speech in case of a cd quality we are using 16 bit per sample so for example if you are you know you are seeing this recording you are listening this recording for a speech signal uh, in this by 6 studio they are using because it is a cd quality sound they are using 16 bit per sample because here uh, the quality is important so uh, usually for a entertainment purpose also if you, in a commercial purpose uh, whatever the cd you are purchasing audio cd original audio cd in that case this quantization is done with a 16 bit per sample and it is a audio so in that case sampling rate would be naturally great as per the nyquist criteria it should be greater than twice fm so if you consider a audio signal frequency 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz so as per the nyquist criteria you require a sampling rate greater than 40 kilohertz that means greater than 40000 samples per second but again if you use 40000 samples per second exactly then you require ideal filter at the receiver side to reproduce your audio signal so again it is a difficult case so because of that slightly greater than 40 kilohertz we are using that is 44.1 kilohertz sampling rate is standardized for cd quality sound so that means we are taking 44000 and 100 samples in a one second for a cd quality audio so that is the standard utilized for a cd quality audio so 44000 and 100 samples in a one second and 16 bit per sample is a quantization utilized for a cd quality sound or a cd quality audio so here the important question is how many quantization level you are using and how many samples per second you are using that is uh, the sampling rate and both will decide your quality and if you are increasing you know a quality then you have you, you are producing more number of bits 
so you require a higher transmission rate you require a more memory to store that right so if you can compromise with the quality you can reduce number of bits you can reduce number of samples but again we have to remember you cannot reduce you know less than nyquist criteria minimum samples you require yeah, that is a twice fm now this is a quantization error because of quantization you know error produces because here uh, the quantization error is visible in this signal because the number of level which we are using is less you can see that number of levels are very less so because of that you know 1 2 3 4 4 uh, for the positive side 4 for the negative side so total total eight levels are there and because of that this quantization error is visible here the quantization error is basically a difference between your original signal and quantized signal but if you are using 8 bit per sample then this quantization error is very less and maybe invisible in the diagram so that you know in this uh, case i have not taken 8 bit per sample to show you the quantization error intentionally i have taken uh, total 8 levels and 8 levels can be coded only with 3 bits but 3 bits per sample are not sufficient because as you can see here the quantization error is large and we and because of this quantization error your signal quality will become poor and to reduce the amplitude of this quantization error we are increasing the number of quantization levels so we are using in practical situation for a telephone quality speech we are using 8 bits for quantization that means total number of levels which we are using is a 256 for a telephone quality speech and total number of quantization level which we are using for audio quality uh, CD quality audio which we are using is a 16 bit so the number of levels are 2 raised to 16 so 2 raised to 16 means 65,536 number of levels we are using so if you are using that much level I think quantization error is near to 0 now there are two type of quantization the quantization which we discuss was a uh, uniform quantization the problem of uniform quantization is that that if your signal amplitude is less then quantization error is let's say q even if your signal amplitude is high then also your quantization error is same that is q that means for a higher a signal strength you are getting better snr and for a lower signal strength you are getting a poor snr snr means signal to noise ratio we can also call it as a signal to quantization ratio so if you are using a non uh, uh, sorry uh, uniform quantization we are getting non uniform signal to quantization ratio that is what we want to avoid what we want is uniform signal to quantization ratio for all signal amplitudes and if we want uniform signal to quantization ratio then we have to go for non uniform quantization so with the help of a uniform quantization you will not be able to achieve you know a uniform uh, signal to quantization ratio so to get the uniform to si signal to quantization ratio we have to go for a non uniform quantization so non uniform quantization quantization error remains same for small as well as large signal amplitude so you know uh, your overall signal to noise ratio will be uniform irrespective of whether your signal strength is you know a high or whether your signal strength is small that means we are reducing step size if your signal uh, signal is having a you know smaller uh, value so for a smaller amplitude signal we use less step size and for a large amplitude signal we are using a large step size so that means we are not using same step size for entire amplitude range so that is the uh, basic uh, of uh, non uniform quantization which is i think very much uh, clear from this diagram so this is example of uh, non linear quantization or a non uniform quantization and this is example of uniform quantization now as you can see here that if your signal amplitude is large here we are using you know step size larger so of course here the quantization error is large but our amplitude is also large so overall ratio remains same and as and when our amplitudes are less here we are reducing the step size you can see here step size are very less in this area because our amplitudes are less here so this y axis shows the amplitude 
So if amplitude is less, we are using less uh, step size. So our quantization error is also less. So for less amplitude, less quantization error. So again, ratio remains same. And that is not the case here. You can see here quantization error is same for all the levels. For higher amplitude, you can see the quantization error is small. For lower amplitude, quantization error again small, similar as higher value. So here signal to quantization ratio will be poor. Here in this area, the signal to quantization ratio will be good. That is what we don't want. We want uniform signal to quantization ratio and because of that, we prefer non-linear quantization. So, in this case, SNR is poor for a low amplitude signal and good for a high amplitude signal. Uh, that is, SNR is, uni is not uniform. That means, we are not getting uniform signal to quantization ratio in this case. While, in this case, you can see that SNR is same for low amplitude signal because, you know, for a low amplitude uh, signal, your quantization step is small, so quantization error is less. And for high amplitude signal, quantization step is large, so quantization error is also large. So again, the ratio remains same. And that is the reason why in practice we use the nonlinear quantization. So how to achieve this nonlinear quantization? To achieve the nonlinear quantization, we are using a technique called compounding. Compounding means it is the term taken after the combination of, you know, compression and expanding. So, this comp is for compression and this ending is for expanding process. So, the combination of compression and expanding process is known as a compounding process. So, our input samples, which is a PCM samples, which are actually, which is, which we have taken, which, which the information signal, which we have sampled is first passes through the compression and compression can be done by a low or a mu low. A low is basically used in India and mu low is basically used in America. So, using this low, we are compressing the signal and then we perform the linear quantization. And as a result of this two block, ultimately we will get a non-linear quantization. More details about the A low and mu low you will study in digital communication course which will be offered to you in semester 6. So, basically uh, the PCM system, that is a pulse code modulation system, which is a basic system to convert your information signal into a digital signal. And in a PCM system, the sampling and quantization are very important. So, PCM system basically amplitude of each sample of original message is quantized and rounded off to the nearest value. So, the PCM system, first you will sample the signal as per the Nyquist criteria and after sampling the signal, you will perform the quantization job. Once you pro do the both the job sampling, it will discretize your signal in time domain and when you uh, quantize your signal, you will discretize your signal in amplitude domain. So now discrete signal is available in both the domain amplitude as well as time. So now, after doing this, you can encode your signal. You can assign binary code to each and every sample. And after assigning binary code, you will be able to transmit that binary code. So let us look at the block diagram of PCM system. So here, the first block is a source of information signal. Information signal I am using in a wide term like information signal can be your, the speech signal which is generated by microphone. It can be generated by, you know, orchestra where so many microphones are placed. One person is singing, one person is playing with harmonium, another person is playing with a flute, another person is playing with a violin or a casio. So many persons are playing in orchestra and so many mics are there. We mix audio signal coming from all these together and we get one signal, we call it audio signal, having a range of 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz. That could be a source of information. Another source of information could be a video camera, which gives us a video signal at the output. Now, in all such cases, you know, the frequency will be different. If you are using simple microphone to get the speech signal, 
so we, if i am speaking to this microphone this microphone is generating a, a speech signal for me the output of this microphone we call it a speech signal having a frequency range from 300 hertz to 3.4 kilohertz the audio signal which we have taken the example of orchestra it it has a frequency range from 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz the video signal it has a frequency range from 0 to 5 megahertz so all these are the sources of information apart from that there may be a telemetry signals there may be a signals generated by transducers transducers like a you know a temperature sensors flow sensors pressure sensors earthquake sensors all these transducers are, transducers are producing the information signal then all this information signal we call it as a real world signal and real world signals all real world signals are analog in nature and if we want to transmit all these uh, information signals which is analog in nature using a digital communication technique then we have to use a pcm system and in a pcm system the first two block as which is shown in this block diagram is a sampler and quantizer the sampler will do the sampling job quantization will do the quantization job but before this there is a very interesting that is anti aliasing filter which is a low pass filter very interesting it's very important because you know as we have studied the nyquist uh, criteria our sampling rate fs should be always greater than or equal to 2 fm so that means our uh, input frequency should not exceed if it exceed you know and because of that if your fs becomes less than 2 fm then aliasing will create and aliasing will distort your information at all so to prevent the aliasing we are using this anti aliasing filter here so anti aliasing filter is nothing but a low pass filter which will prevent your information signal amplitude so this will be a cut off frequency it will not allow any frequency beyond fm to pass through the it and it will not allow it to at the input of sampler so you know all this frequency more than fm will be filtered out by this anti aliasing filter so it will ensure that at the sampler input you will be getting frequency always less than fm because we are using this sampler as per the nyquist criteria we are following here a nyquist criteria where we are using sampling rate greater than or equal to 2 fm right so in that case we have already decided the sampling rate so we should not allow frequency more than fm and this anti aliasing filter will ensure that part so it will prevent the aliasing basically and that's why the name given is a anti aliasing filter basically it is a low pass filter so after quantization uh, you know our samples are ready to for the coding with encoder so then after we will do the encoder at the output of encoder we have a digital data ready for the transmission now it is up to us how uh, how to how we want to transmit this data there are various means one a very very popular way is a fiber optic cable you can transmit the data with help of a fiber optic cable but in that case you have to convert this into a light so electrical signal is converted into a light signal with help of either a led or a laser it converts your electrical signal digital signal into a light that means if in your digital signal if there is a logic 1 then light is present if logic 0 then light is absent your optical fiber can carry this light signal and at the receiver side this light is again converted into electrical pulses so one medium possible medium is a fiber optic cable another possible medium is a coaxial cable then also you can use digital transmission techniques like amplitude shift keying frequency shift keying phase shift keying and other version of phase shift keying like uh, qpsk quadrature phase shift keying 8psk then quadrature amplitude modulation and in a mobile uh, let's say if if you look at this mobile in this mobile uh, they are using in, in fact in your mobile also uh, you are using gmsk technique that is a gaussian minimum shift keying technique so all these techniques are basically used to transmit uh, our speech signal over a free air so basically when we speak to this microphone there is inbuilt processes there uh, so uh, you know there is a microphone and when we speak here 
this microphone is connected to some signal processing circuits it will amplify your voice and then it is given to the anti-aliasing filter then your voice is sampled then it is quantized then it is encoded then it is compressed and after compression it is given to the transmitter and the modulation which we are using in mobile communication is a GMSK modulation Gaussian minimum shift king modulation so there are various means of transmitting this digital signal to the distant place so as seen here if you are using if you are not using this modulation methods then at certain interval you require regenerative repeaters because if you are not using carrier to transmit your digital signal after certain distance your carrier will be spreaded in time domain it will be attenuated in amplitude domain so you have to regenerate noise free clean pulses and to generate noise free clean pulses you require a regenerative repeaters so this regenerative repeater the job is that if your signal is spreaded in time domain attenuated in a free, uh, you know a uh, amplitude domain then this regenerative repeater or regeneration circuit can generate you a noise free clean pulses out of it and so this is the digital signal which will be given to the decoder and basically decoder is nothing but it's a digital to analog converter and the output analog uh, will be you know a you, your quantized amplitude will be available at the output of decoder and these quantized amplitudes are further passes through the reconstruction filter that is basically for a smoothing purpose is a low pass filter which will smooth your function and at the output of that your analog signal uh, will be available back so here there was analog signal the same analog signal will be available at the receiver so this analog signal you have converted here in, in, in into digital form then you are transmitting this with help of so many medium as we discussed and then at the receiver side this analog signal will be available back and then it is given to the information destination so this is actually a basic PCM system but this is a reference, you know, the digital signal available at the output of PCM signal, a PCM system, it's having a lot of data available. So even if I know, I, I will sp uh, speak here at the microphone, uh, you know, and if I am converting this in a digital form, this speech is, uh, will be sampled at the rate of 8000 samples per second and it will be coded with 8 bit per sample. So if you calculate the rate required, you know, in a PCM system, the voice is a sample at the rate of 8000 samples per second and each sample is coded with 8 bit per sample and if you calculate the data rate 8000 into 8 so it will be 64 kbps data rate you will require to send one speech signal and if you want to store it you require 8 kilobyte memory to store the speech for a one second so it is a huge amount of data so further there are compression uh, techniques are utilized to compress the data but it is uh, beyond the scope of this lecture so we will not discuss all those here then uh, in in order to transmit a message of more than one user then we are using time division multiplexing so here uh, we are taking a sample from user 1 so this is uh, the digital data of user 1 then we take the sample from user 2 so this is data from user 2 and so in a in a time domain we can accommodate so many users one by one and in a mobile communication one channel is allocated to simultaneously eight users so eight users are multiplexed together in a PCM system usually we use here 30 use, uh, users so 30 users are multiplexed together so one user is a 64 kbps multiplied by 30 users and plus two channel for uh, uh, sig signaling and synchronization so total will be a 32 channels multiplied by 64 kbps if you calculate this it comes out to be you know a uh, 2.048 mbps so that will be the data rate for 30 users in a PCM system uh, these are the line coding techniques but I think that uh, now the uh, time is not permitting so I think uh, we will skip this part line coding parts now as the bipolar these are the various techniques uh, to modify your digital signal in such a way that you know it will uh, have a clock signal uh, there will not be effect of noise on your signal and to prevent all those these line of coding techniques are utilized and the digital data transmission techniques we are using because now digital data is ready with us we want to transmit the data we cannot transmit digital signal 
at a longer distance because you know the digital signal is having a DC component also. And as we have discussed in last lecture that if you want to communicate a DC signal, DC signal is a zero frequency. The size of antenna required is proportional to wavelength. So lambda is a C upon F, F is zero, so your lambda is infinite. So the DC signal, if you want to transmit, you require an antenna of infinite length, which is practically not possible. So what we do is we use a digital, if you want to transmit a digital signal, we are using a high frequency carrier. So in this mobile phone, we are using a carrier 890 megahertz. 890 megahertz to 915 megahertz to transmit carrier from mobile to base station. That is called uplink. And from 930 megahertz to 960 megahertz to transmit data uh, signal from base station to mobile. So that is called downlink. So this is around 1 gigahertz and if you calculate, you know, 1 gigahertz, the size of antenna required is in centimeter. And you can see that in mobile the antenna is not visible because the antenna is very small. It is mounted inside the PCB itself. So there is a micro strip antenna available inside this mobile. It is very less because the frequency which we are using is around 1 gigahertz because 890 megahertz is nearer to 1 gigahertz. So frequency in gigahertz, so our antenna size is very less. So we can accommodate the antenna inside the mobile phone itself. And we don't require antenna like this or even we don't require antenna like this. right? So these are the antenna requires if your frequency are in megahertz. But if you are frequency in gigahertz, you don't require much larger size of antenna and you can use a smaller antenna for that purpose. So this is the block diagram. Your data is ready here. Transmitter will mo modulate your data onto carrier and then uh, you use the antenna to transmit to the longer distance. At the receiver side, you will be using receiver. It will reconstruct your digital signal and it will be given to the destination. And this is uh, some of the techniques which I discussed already. Amplitude shift king, this is amplitude shift king, this is a frequency shift king where you know uh, different frequency for different level. And this is a phase shift king. And similarly another modified version is quadrature phase shift king which is utilized here. Uh, so now uh, in a conclusion I will say that there are uh, broadly analog transmission techniques, digital transmission techniques, analog data and digital data. So if you have analog data and analog transmission technique it is utilized in radio and broadcasting TV purpose. So commercial AM radio, FM radio and TV broadcasting are using these techniques. If you have a digital data and analog transmission we are using modem based communication. If you have a digital uh, data and digital transmission we are using for local area networks. If you have a analog information like a speech, audio and video and if you want to digital transmission then we are using PCM. So these are the, some of the references, books. Again, these references are same as the previous lecture. So thank you very much for attending this lecture. If you have any query, if you want to give any feedback about this lecture, please email to me at email id which is given in this slide chvitalani at gecrajcourt.ac.in. Thank you very much for listening my lecture and for your patience.